I have got a ton of requests from you guys to do this video, so I'm going to do it right now. Typical question when you guys uh, email me or put comments down on some of my videos. Typical question is, uh, Steve, when I go out to buy a used chainsaw, what are some of the things I should be looking for on that thing before I buy it so I know I'm not getting screwed, I know I'm not getting ripped off, before I make that purchase and maybe I'm going to take it home and find out there's something wrong with it and it's just going in my metal recycling bin anyway. This is what I do when I go buy a used chainsaw, you guys. It's kind of a checklist inside my head. I'm going to share it with you guys right now. Share this video with your friends. Here we go. guys and girls welcome back to Steve small ended saloon again thanks for tuning in I got some lucky extra going on right here this is actually really good beer they discontinued this beer for several years and now they're bringing it back what a cool can that is though isn't it that's definitely going up on the shelf behind me in the next couple days if you're going out looking for a used chainsaw I would highly recommend you leave your beer at home. No drinking and driving, you guys. I'm gonna be referring to uh, several things here. I'm gonna take you through this really quick. Um, I'm gonna be saying red flags through this video. When I say red flag, what I mean by that is like, whoa, stop. There's something not right here. There's something wrong, possibly, red flag comes up that might mean walk away from the deal i got a lot more in-depth videos on my channel so i'm going to be having some links up here in the information button as well as at the end of this video i got some clickable uh, thumbnails there for you too on uh, more in-depth videos that i'm going to be showing you guys on that so check those out when you get a chance i'm also going to be probably referring to some tools and some parts that i'm using on here I got a link in the description of this video also back to my parts and tools store so check that out when you get a chance so you guys you're on your way out to a garage sale a yard sale an estate sale maybe a flea market maybe you saw a classified ad where you're going over to a guy's house because he wants to sell you his chainsaw number one thing I would say before you even leave your house take a little spark plug wrench with you see how small that little sucker is right there it fits right in your pocket i'll take you through i'll explain more to you why that's very important for you to take a spark plug wrench for you in a minute so you get to a garage sale a yard sale you see that chainsaw sitting on that guy's table before he even comes up to you and uh, starts giving you the old sales pitch there is several things that you can do to this chainsaw within like 60 seconds first thing obviously is uh, a visual inspection look at that thing does it look like it just fell off the guy's tailgate while he was driving down the highway is it beat is it missing parts off of it is that bar and chain bent the guide bar bent the chain falling off of it stuff like that that's what you want to check on that that's easy to do just a quick visual inspection the next thing that I do, this is just automatic reflex for me as I pull that cord. I'm checking it for compression. Now watch this chainsaw right here when you're checking it for compression. Spark plugs in there obviously. Hold it down and pull. You feel that? That is great compression on that thing right there. If you guys got a chainsaw that looks like this, check this out. I know this isn't a chainsaw, it's a blower, but the concept is still the same. Spark plugs in this thing, spark plug is tight. If you're looking at a guy's chainsaw at a garage sale or something like that and it does this. Red flag. Now that is something you may actually want to just stop and not even talk to the guy walk away from that deal right there that is really bad compression there is something wrong with that with that engine in that thing 
once you know that the compression is actually good in that thing or that it's feels decent to you it's not like really bad other things that you can do spin that if it has the bar and chain on it that's great spin that bar and chain around make sure it spins around like that it's not, not all rusty or something like that and then at the same time you can check the chain brake put the chain brake on it's locked that's very important the chain brake works next thing that you can do that's very very simple and very quick is check the anti-vibration mounts there's mounts that separate the uh, engine from where your hands sit so you don't get that vibration from the engine running it doesn't make your hands numb almost all chainsaws have that there's some really cheap chainsaws out there that don't have that anyways but you can check this easily by just putting that down on the ground and just pushing that forward if you can kind of see that you see how it's kind of springy they're tight they feel good flip it over on the side and do the same thing sideways like that and on the other side like that super fast super easy to do if it feels like that chainsaw is just flopping around in your hand when you do that there's a problem with the anti-vibration mounts in there most likely that's not necessarily a red flag that could be something quite easy to fix while you're at it look at that bar and chain and see on that bar if there's any blue or burnt looking marks especially it's going to be on the bottom of the chain on the bar you're going to possibly see that there's some blue burnt marks right along here and does your chain look dry just look at that chain and does it look oily or does it look just bone dry if that's the case there could be something wrong with the oiling system simple thing check that oil tank pull the oil cap off of that and look in there everybody's got that little flashlight in their pocket you got a cell phone in your pocket you got a flashlight on that thing flip the flashlight on and look in that tank if it's absolutely bone dry in there maybe the guy just forgot I've seen this a million times didn't put oil in there and that's why that chain is burnt and everything if it's got oil in it and you still have that burning on there <clears throat> and the chain is dry still it still may not be a red flag it could be something as simple as uh, the the oil hole in the side of the bar could be plugged that happens all the time I do have a video on my channel again about how to how to check that while you're at that taking the uh, the oil cap off of there pop the gas cap off too the fuel cap look in there again with your flashlight is there any fuel in it take a whiff that's actually really important you guys if that stinks if you just go whoa that was that is gross is that even gasoline is that even petrol in there that stinks that could be actually a very repairable problem maybe the guy's selling it because it won't start and that's the only problem that's not again necessarily a red flag so you did all those checks right there shouldn't have taken you any more than about a minute you say hey can i take this outside can i see if this thing even runs if he says no you can't do that wow big red flag guys if he won't let you go outside and even see if this thing runs that is a huge red flag the only thing that I can think of why that would be a legitimate thing for a guy to say is if maybe you were at a flea market you're in a big huge room big building there's hundreds of people around of course he's gonna say well no you can't start the chainsaw in here and then you say well do you mind if I just pop outside real quick and just see if this thing starts again he you know that's he might say no to that because he doesn't know if you're going to go jump in your car and take off with his chainsaw whether that chainsaw starts or not the next request out of your mouth should be do you mind if i just pop the spark plug out of that really quick so i can just have a quick look at the condition of the engine the guy goes no big red flag again you're not going to let me pull a spark plug out and he says well i don't have a spark plug wrench well isn't that magical
I happen to have one right here in my pocket. Are you going to let me pull the spark plug out now? If he still says no, that is a big red flag. The only reason that I can think of that a guy will not let you pull the spark plug out because it is such an easy thing to do. It is a legitimate request for a potential buyer to do that. That guy's hiding something on you. He already knows there's something wrong with that engine and he doesn't want you to see it. So that's a big red flag. If he doesn't let you pull that spark plug out of there, walk away from that deal. Absolutely, I wouldn't even consider buying that chainsaw if he says, no, you're not pulling the spark plug out. 99% of the time, the guy's gonna say, yeah, no problem, pull the spark plug out, and that is awesome. If he lets you pull that spark plug out of that chainsaw, you have three things that you can do with that right there. First thing is checking for spark. If you already went outside and started it and it ran even for a second or whatever, it didn't run very good, you already know it has spark. But if, if you couldn't start it, you can check it for spark. Again, I have a video on my channel that shows you how to do that properly once you have the spark plug out, so make sure you watch that. The other thing that you can do is read that spark plug. Take that spark plug and look at it. The last video I just put up before this on my channel is how to read a spark plug. There is tons of information on that spark plug that you can uh, look at and see maybe there's something going on in that engine that maybe even the guy who's trying to sell it to you doesn't even know, but now you're gonna know because you're reading that spark plug. In my opinion, the most important thing that you can do while you have that spark plug out is to actually look down that spark plug hole to actually see the condition of the engine. Put your piston, pull that thing over so the piston is all the way at bottom dead center. Just pull it over, piston's all the way down. Grab your phone flashlight again and shine that down that hole and look at the side of the cylinder. You can see little scratches maybe. You can see whether it's in excellent condition. Again, I have another video on my channel to get more in depth with how to do that. Now that may be as much time as you have right there to make your decision on whether you're gonna buy that guy's used chainsaw, his secondhand chainsaw off of him or not. There are two other things here, you guys, that you can do that it's kind of a dicey situation because it involves taking the guy's chainsaw apart a little bit. 99% of the guys out there are going to go, no, you're not doing that. But if you can convince a guy to let you do this first, take the muffler off. You can clearly see the shape of that engine when you see the exhaust side of that piston. That is really important. Then you will get really good peace of mind knowing that he hasn't ran straight gas through it or something like that. If he lets you take the starter off, you can take the starter off on one side and then you can take the barn chain off on one side too because we want to see the, the two ends of the crankshaft. What we're doing with that is we're checking that for crank play. That's called crank play. If you take the starter off like this and you can wiggle the flywheel up and down like this sideways like this, you wanna check that sideways play on that. If that moves at all on there, or if you have it on the other side where it's on the clutch side and you move that back and forth a little bit and you just feel that little little bit of a, a wiggle on there when you're going sideways like that, that actually is kind of a red flag. The bad part about that crankshaft play when you can wiggle that flywheel or your clutch back and forth like that, not only is it a, a good sign that the, the bearings are worn out, but there's also a crankshaft seal in there that's also wiggling back and forth and that could be sucking air into your engine and making your engine run too lean. All kinds of problems with that. Hey, just another really quick thing here before we sign off, you guys. If you see a chainsaw like this sitting on a guy's table, just pretend it's a complete, a complete chainsaw. Barn chains on there, top covers on. You take it outside, you start it up. It runs absolutely perfectly fine. 
You're like, this is awesome. The guy wants 150 bucks for it. What you might not know is that you can buy that at a box store when it's on sale, brand new with full warranty on it for $99. Do I have to say it? So I hope that was helpful for you guys. I hope that was thorough enough. Maybe I did miss something. Put some comments down right underneath this video if I missed something or if you just want to comment. That's great. I'm just trying to help you guys out. Maybe I saved you some money by not buying a piece of junk chainsaw from a guy where you're just going to throw it in the garbage. Anyways, give me that thumbs up button, guys. Hit that like button and uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And share it with your friends like I told you at the beginning of this video. Don't forget those repair videos that I kept referring to in there. I got those up in the I button, the information button here. And coming up really shortly here, four clickable thumbnails at the end of this video. You can get back to some of those going that way too. Lucky logger, extra. Good luck, guys. Steve out.